Welcome to this week of Being in the Boom, the podcast. We have a very special guest, Jared Selinger. Tune in this week as we recap, not even recap, as we discuss what's going on with his career, recap his Ohio State career, talk about some of the different things in the NBA, what went on with March Madness, Chris Holtman, Thad Mata, and also what's going on with Ohio State Spring Ball. Welcome to this week of Being in the Boom, the podcast. We've got a very special guest, as we do nearly every week on the show, the legend, the man, the myth, Jared Sellinger, man. Welcome to the podcast, man. Appreciate you all having me, man. It's, it's yeah. supposed to be fun. Oh, no doubt. Fun. Oh, it's going to be lit. Yeah, as the <laughs> and, kids say. And, I mean, we're even more gracious because, I mean, he just got off the flight not too long ago. Yeah. A long-ass flight. Yeah. And man. it comes in here on, on the podcast. And, and he's uh, our first basketball player, man. Exactly. You know? Hey, exactly. I appreciate that. No, we definitely appreciate having you, man. man. Sure. So, so uh, how's it going, man? What, what's, what's the word over in China, man? How was that shit? Man, it's tough. Is it, it is tough, man, just because, like, every country makes acclimates to other countries. Right. China doesn't. China doesn't <laughs> want none of that. China, like, it's their way or the highway, bro. Right. And so, like, eating out after games, like, you ain't no place to eat. You got to literally search everywhere. It's either McDonald's or Pizza Hut, KFC. <laughs> like, depending on the city you in. It's tough, man. It's one of the toughest situations you can be in. But at the same time, it's like you find out about yourself. Right. Because you're so far away from everybody. Mm-hmm. So, like, when it's 1 o'clock over here in the morning, it's 2 o'clock p.m. over there. So, right. everybody sleeps. So, I got to find something to do. So, <laughs> I start watching TV shows, watching y'all's podcasts, and uh, just learning. Just learning about me and, and life. That's dope, man. And this is what, your, your second, third year over there? That's my second year. Second, second year. year. So just finish up the second year over there. Um, you know, was it a hard decision when you decided, you know what, I ain't in the NBA right now. I'm going to make this decision to go over to China and play and, and get paid. Because we know that's what it's all about at the hey, end of the day. And, get about paid. The and, and they pay very well all compared to dollar. other leagues. It's all about the dollar. But the, my biggest decision was I just came off a broken foot. I wasn't having a lot of uh, NBA interest. A lot of teams wanted me to go to the G League. And uh, I felt like China was the best way to um, kind of find who I am, you mm-hmm. know. Because in the NBA, if you ain't in your first two years, you if you ain't doing nothing, they put you in a box. Right. They, all right, you rebound, you set screens. All right, you a catch and shoot guy. All right, you are a defender. Mm-hmm. So I kind of lost like what I was doing in high school and college. So I, I, when I went over to China, I kind of find myself as as the basketball player I once was. Right. And so that was one of my biggest decisions of going over there and uh, just learning about myself again as a pro. Right. That's critical. I mean, a lot of times, like you said, even a football, the shit happens. I mean, you go out one year, you got some injuries, you're labeled as injury prone. Man, what? You're only doing short yardage situations. Right. You're just a short yardage back. So That's it. you, you got to be able to break that mold. And, I mean, the thing that I like about basketball is – at a professional level, you got so many different avenues to be able to do that. It's not just the NBA to right, where right. you can make a, a good earning and that can be your career. I mean, hell, right. you can go overseas, like, uh, hey, many different places. And get that bag. Exactly. Yeah. Many different places, man. The bag is everywhere. You just got to find it. No doubt. No doubt. That's big facts. Now, now, when you obviously evaluate uh, you know, your season from, from playing in China, now, is there any – want to like you know what man, i want to be home i want to get back yeah playing man. in the nba so what's that process like for you and you was balling like a mug i was over there looking i'm like this dude has got like 30 rebounds 30 points a game <laughs> this shit was crazy when i looked at the numbers and saw the shit yeah. um so so how is it to say you know what i'm gonna go back over there or i may go back over there but i really want to come home man. how do you decipher the two and you know how does it line up now, honestly man i don't know i really don't know but i will tell you this when you Sitting at that table, you know, the little spinny table. I, I think it's called a Sally Mae table or whatever when they spin that. <laughs> uh, and you eating it from the chopsticks, and all of a sudden you get a bowl of, of chicken. And I'm, I, don't, I say <laughs> chicken. Know I just, chicken or that? <laughs> no, it's chicken because it has its whole head, neck, oh, body. Right. Right. And it's a chicken. They call it chicken noodle soup. And I'm just like, that's. I can't eat that. Right. And that, that's what gets me. It's like they serve the chicken with the head with it. Right. And, and it freaks me out. And I just never eat the chicken. So, like. That's one of the reasons why I need to be home. Right. It's like it's sometimes <laughs> when you're at when you're at dinner. I mean, one time they try to serve us raccoon. Uh, oh my god! Uh, I had uh, lamb. The whole body of lamb where they just like roasted right in front of you. Like it's. I mean, I've seen a lot of stuff over there that makes me want to come home, bro. So you vegan now? Nah, I ain't vegan. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be vegan. But you're cultured. Yeah, I'm cultured. Right. I'm cultured. You're super cultured. Facts. Hey, right, so do your family uh? 
have a chance to come out there and see you? Though? Nah, my wife does. Okay. My wife came out there. Um, but other than that, nobody. My dad don't want to make that flight, man. That's man. that might be how long is 16, the flight? Sixteen hours. Jesus. Depending on the wind. Depending on the wind. <laughs> depending on the wind. <laughs> and depending on the location you go, you could go from like one time. The first time I ever went to China, I went from uh, Columbus to L.A. From L.A. to China, but I didn't go the back route. Mm-hmm. I went across, right back over to Columbus to go across that way because the wind. So th- instead of going, uh, instead of being 15, I was 18. So it just depends on the wind and then how they want to, how they, how the Earth orbits or something like it's something like that. <laughs> Have you picked up on the language there? Uh, I know, I know the usual, the, <laughs> the ni hao, uh, the ask for a uh, sprite is a short b. Um, I know a, a lot of cuss words. Uh, <laughs> Dasha B is one of them. Dasha B. Uh, Malika B. Uh, There's a whole bunch of shit. So I when know. I go in the nail salon, I hear him say, Dasha B. All right. I know what the fuck you saying to me. <laughs> <laughs> you big, stupid mother. Right. <laughs> exactly right. what they tell me. That's what's up. Yeah. Hey, so, so how's the process? Like, obviously, you know, you're getting – what's the big difference between getting coached by an American, American coach and a and – a, Chinese coach translation man everything gets lost in translation and then you think uh like if y'all go to a football football game um you can just talk football with anybody mm-hmm. right it's not the same over there right if I try to start talking basketball it's like what are you talking about it's like I never heard of that before so it's like the language barrier hurts even more like um stunting just stunt and stay you know what I'm saying stun at the uh, the guy with the ball and stay with your defender he and guy looked at me like what's that I'm like man that's not I need to know basketball. I right. need to be around people that know basketball. <laughs> and uh, the trans- translator wasn't really that great. Uh, so it just – everything got lost in translation. Man, that's, that's tough. tough. That's tough. Especially when you uh, – no matter what team you're on, you're playing a team sport, you got a common goal to try to win. Right. And, and when you're kind of behind the eight ball from a language barrier, that shit makes it that much harder to be able to communicate with your teammates. Right. Right. Um, now, when you, when you break down these rosters or when they break down the rosters and assemble them, how many Americans are on each team? Two. Two. Oof. Two. So you in the way they play in China is only one import on the court in the first and the fourth, and then you can play both imports in the second and third. Wow. So uh at one point, you know, my minutes was going from, you know, playing down to the two minute mark of the first, come out the game, mm-hmm. and then I'm playing the whole second, the whole third, and I could possibly play the whole fourth depending on the, the situation of the of how we playing. So uh <laughs> It's tough, man. It really is. And then on top of that, like our, your Chinese teammates don't really know a lot of English, right? So you're trying to talk in the middle of the oh, game. So you gotta man. let certain stuff go. <laughs> if somebody misses a screen or something, you gotta kind of let that go and, and run to the translator, tell the translator to do something. Mm-hmm. He wow. comes on the court, he yells it, and then it's like, what play was that? It's five plays ago. Right. It's too late. <laughs> you know. So wow. it's it's just tough. Now, what, what city are you? In? I was in Shenzhen. Shenzhen. So uh, how is that compared to? The larger cities that are over there. Shenzhen is one of the largest cities. Okay. So you got if if you break it down, like everybody knows Shanghai, Beijing. Right. But Shenzhen is another uh, Americanized. I won't say Americanized, but like kind of cultured mm-hmm. uh, city. So Shenzhen was really good. And it's one of the highest in tech. So oh, it's dope. It was a whole bunch of stuff going on around. So instantly, when a, a lot of people think of China and, and basketball, you know who they're talking about. Stefan Marbury. Mm. Dude went over there, reinvented himself. Killing I think got like a, a statue Ugh. wherever he was playing he's at. The man. Won championships. I mean, he became a citizen, right? Yeah, he's the man. He lives there, I, I believe. He's the wow. man. I'll never forget. We uh the game, uh, Philadelphia seventy sixers preseason. Philadelphia seventy sixers and um damn, what's who else it was? Uh Dallas Mavericks. Mm-hmm. And you have Ray Allen. You have uh, Eaton Thomas. You have uh, uh, Julius Irvin. Um, I believe Matumbo was there. I, I can't name everybody. But when Steph walked in there, mm-hmm. it was like, oh, this is Steph's arena. Like, right. Steph <laughs> Steph is the man. Like, right. when it comes to – like, Steph is the man. I mean, he has credit cards over there. He has headphones over there. Dang. I seen a Starberry store uh, – a stand, a stand up Starberry store, not a pop up shop, right. but a, a Starberry store uh, in 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 China. I mean, he's doing big things out there, and he's just only growing uh, as his academy. He's growing an academy out there where he, he has a lot of, of the young basketball players come filter through the academy to kind of lead up to the uh, the league NBL and um, CBA, which one I played in, 
and lead them up into that into that area. Man, that's cool. So they're taking they're taking basketball real serious, and Steph is taking it real serious over there too. So it's gonna be good for this for the country of China. That's dope. Now, when, when you look at shit like that, obviously you want to come home, but do you? Does it cross your mind like, damn, man, I'm balling over here. I could kind of model could my, yeah. myself after Steph, Steph yeah. or it's like, nah, man, I ain't me. I you see, you you can see it, you can see it happening, but it's tough. It really is because if you ain't one of them like players, like Jimmy Fredette, for one, could do that. Right. Jimmy Fredette is one of the most liked players over there. Jimmy Fredette, you got uh, even Mike Beasley, uh, Marshawn Brooks, uh, Darius Adams, even Andre Blatch at one point was mm-hmm. was at that level. And um, these guys, they, they grow. They grow over there. So um, you got you got, you got got a lot of players that can do that, but I couldn't do it. Right. <laughs> I just don't – I don't fit the mold. Like right. Jim, what if Jimmy Fredette does is so much sexier than what I do. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like the way he gets his three off is way sexier than the way I get my three off. So <laughs> so that's why it's just – it's hand-to-hand. just depends. Man, it's crazy when you, when you really break shit down like that. And, and it's even like that here in the United States. I mean, there's certain guys that – could fit the mold to be able to be this superstar all where you're going to look at them like they're the end all be all and it's the same way it's, it's funny hearing that it's the same way in another country uh beasley was one of the cats that opted not to even play in the nba and said fuck it i'm gone i'm gonna play over here and be respected more and get some cheese yeah so that was an interesting situation in, in its own he getting that cheese he getting that cheese <laughs> getting that cheese like what what, uh, what do you what do you what do you do in his in his two months of playing Oh, I won't even say he played two months in China. So he came in March uh, or February, late February. So during the playoffs now, he probably made his contract that he was making in the NBA plus more what? in them two months. And so I don't even know what his contract is, but I'm I'm, I'm imagining north of $5 million. Uh, somewhere in that range? It was no, nah, I think it was vet minimum. So vet minimum was like two one or okay, two three okay. for him. Still though, and, yeah, <laughs> still. I know, and it's tax free. Oh my god! So that's the beautiful part right there. Tax free, you bring that all home. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, On top man. of that, game bonuses. Uh, you got game bonuses. So every time you win, uh, every time you win, you get a certain amount of money. Uh, for every rebound over seven, you get money. For every uh, oh, so assist, that's all time. every that's all like perks. so basically, yeah, it's just. You damn near getting a salary after perks. a game, you win. Right. That's that's a beautiful thing. It is man. beautiful, man, over there. Now, when obviously we know where you are right now, but I, I want to talk a little bit about your, your NBA journey, uh, your time there in Boston. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was that like, and, and how hard of a transition was it? Coming man, from, from that was the from hardest college. One. That was the hardest one. That was, the <laughs> was hardest. it. That was that was one of the hardest transitions I ever had in my Question. life. Was uh, Paul Pierce still there? Yep. Yep. We're going to get on. I got some questions <laughs> for that, too. <laughs> but, go ahead, though. But that was one of the hardest part of, parts of my life uh, was because I had to grow up. Right. I had to grow up. And I wasn't ready, mm-hmm. you know, especially being in here in Columbus, uh, playing two years at Ohio State. So I had my mom. I had my dad. I had my brothers. And then all of a sudden, I'm 10 hours in driving distance away. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, like, shit, I'm on my own. And <laughs> I just lost it. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's the reason why I'm in China now right. is because I just I couldn't handle being a pro. Mm-hmm. That And that statement, be a pro's pro, goes with everything in life. Right. Like, that's from, you know, going to the grocery store and just saying hi to the grandma that, that said <laughs> hi to you. Right. That's being a pro's pro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I just wasn't ready for that. I was just like, man, I'm, I'm finally gone. Finally got some money. Let's do it. And I just lost focus. And, and, and that's – Cra- it's, it's, it's crazy. easy to do. I mean, we, we see it all the time with a bunch of guys, football, basketball, whatever sport, you young. Like you said, you the man where you at. Yeah. Then you go into this arena to where you got the Paul Pierce's, you got KG. Uh, the KG's. Oh, man. Man. You, you play with Jason, some legends. Jason Terry, uh, Chris Wilcox, Ronda. Courtney Lee. I mean, I play with a lot of guys that had not only experience in the NBA, but like been in winning cultures. Right. So, um, it's just it was just totally different, man. It was just totally different. I wasn't ready for it, and, and that's crazy, man. And you, I commend you for being a, a guy that's coming out and admitting that. A lot of people, oh man, there was something going on with the organization. Oh, oh fuck nah. them! It wasn't me. It was all them yeah. and the decisions that they were making. But that's a tough real. situation. But you 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 catch yourself you catch yourself doing that in the, in the situation, right. like man, what the fuck? Right. Like why 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 me? Mm-hmm. Why are you picking me? I'm picking on me, and then you realize like damn. Look at yourself in the mirror, like I see why now. I will keep fucking up, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I constantly kept fucking up, and that is it's the reason why I was I was where I was at the last two years, right? But, but how was it in terms of you know going from Ohio State to a story franchise like Boston? 
man, it was, it was just going from Ohio State to Ohio State almost. Right. And, and I'm, <laughs> when I say Ohio State, I'm, I'm not talking about just basketball. I'm talking about the football. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Because right. you got the Patriots, mm-hmm. then you got you got the Red Sox, right. then you got the Bruins. So yeah. when they look at you, they mm-hmm. think, okay, this is a year for a championship. If right. you look at right. over the years, like some Boston One, sports, yeah. sports team has won a world championship. And, um, I mean, when it comes to, like, college in Boston, I mean, that's just – Whatever. Right. <laughs> if Duke comes in to play Boston College, everything is is uh-huh. great. But until then, it's it's Patriots, Celtics, Red Sox, Bruins. That's it. I'm from Akron. I, obviously, y'all know mm-hmm. Northeast Ohio. I'm a Cleveland Browns fan. I'm an Indians fan. I'm a Cavaliers fan. I fucking hate Boston fans, and I don't hate them just as people. But I hate them because I'm jealous of them. Like they you spoiled. just mentioned, they spoiled as they hell. Spoiled. I mean, the Patriots. <laughs> All your teams. All your fucking, teams good. The Red Sox, the Celtics. The Bruins. Like, it's kids literally that grew up in Boston that don't know what it's like to, to experience lose. losing. Mm-hmm. Like, their teams have always been on top. And that shit just bothers and they, the hell they out They see of Tom Brady every day. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you watch every Sunday, you see the, the person that's taking the ball, and it's Tom Brady. Like, I'm, I'm fine. Right. I'm happy. <laughs> like, there's, there's a possibility of a championship just because 12 is behind the center. Right. You know what I'm saying? And they, they don't understand. Like, they, they don't understand losing. Like, if you're losing, you, you will get booed off the, the arena, out mm-hmm. the arena. Like, it's. You got to win. Now, was Boston one of them cities? Because I know a lot of different NFL and NBA cities. They don't really mingle with, with certain people. Is Boston one of them cities like are the superstars, the people we all mingle, or is it pretty much the status quo, everybody just no, stick to their own sport? I think I think every everybody mingles. The beautiful part about Boston is the other professional sports support the other professional sports. Mm-hmm. So, like, you will have a Julian Edelman crushing two beers on the Jumbotron <laughs> as he's watching, you know, as he's That's watching sweet. the Celtics play. Yeah. You will have Gronk sit behind and act a fool at, at a Bruins game. Right. You will have, you know, Big Poppy Ortiz. You know, Tom Brady just shows up out of clear blue sky. <laughs> you, you, you know what I'm saying? Tom right. Brady moves like a ghost, man. Right. You, one moment you might see him, next moment you won't. You know what I'm saying? You have Bill Belichick, Rob uh, uh, Kraft sitting there on court side of the Celtics game. You'll see him at, at the Red Sox game. You'll see him at a Bruins game. Like, they support each other. I think that's why they win. Right. Because you just have a big group of people supporting one another. That's a beautiful thing, man. To be able to be in that environment where you got so many fucking all world people, not right. just athletes, because you talk about the Rob, uh, Robert Crafts and the Belichicks, yeah, all just you know supporting one another. And it's like, damn, man, we on top of this motherfucking city right here. This right. is Boston, yeah. and, yeah. and we right. win. Yeah. We right. run this town, uh, <laughs> right. like the movie. That's a uh, that's cold, man. But right. I, I want to transition a little bit, I, and I bounce around too in these conversations. I man. love so, it. So be prepared. I love uh, it. I want to transition to your time at Ohio State. I mean, that's something that obviously the people want to know, that we all want to know. <laughs> obviously, we were here a little bit a part of that. But I really wasn't here. No, I wasn't. Nah, you I, was you were here. I was, I was here. He was here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He I, was I got the picture that uh, we're going to post on here, man. Uh, <laughs> I'm coming out, and I'm declaring, and I'm on wall-to-wall sports. And I, I, you got the entire basketball team, Jared Selinger. You got Trey Burke, who was like five one, five two at the time. <laughs> yeah. These dudes, y'all were freshmen at the time, right? I was a junior. He was a sophomore. Okay. Just won a state championship, man. The shit was crazy. And all the talk was, all right, man, you got another Selinger boy coming to Ohio State, and he about to be the man. But when you come and you are the man, that was like, oh, shit, this is real. They got another one. Man, what was that experience like coming from, obviously, man, here in town, then coming and balling. The turning point. I'll tell you, I'll never forget the turning point was the Baylor scrimmage. It was the inner squad scrimmage. Uh, that there was no nobody there. It was just our teams, three refs, no cameras up, and uh, we played. And I had like forty something, and, and that was the turning Ooh. point. <laughs> and that's when Thad looked at me. It was like, oh, all my right. guy, you're my <laughs> guy. <laughs> yeah, you know, and 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 that's that was the turning point. And then I had great seniors around me. Mm-hmm. So I had John Diebler. I had I had David Lighty. I had Dallas Lauderdale, who's been a part of the winning culture. Right. You yeah. know, Dave, Dave was in the Final Four team of '07, mm-hmm. so he he seen the winning culture, and they kind of. Took the six young guys that came in. It was me, Deshaun Thomas, Aaron Kraft, Jordan Seibert, Lenzel Smith Jr., and, uh, well, we had to transfer, Evan Ravenel. Mm-hmm. And they took all six of us and kind of, like, molded us into being, you know, what the program wanted to be. Right. And I really have to put most of my uh, accolades on my teammates because if it wasn't for them, like, I wouldn't have been nowhere near as dominant 
uh, my freshman or sophomore year. Right, man. And that's cold, man. Especially in basketball, you got a young guy come in, he ball, you got all these seniors on the basketball team. Right. You would instantly think, oh, these guys are like jealous hearted. They don't want me to succeed. But that, didn't, that wasn't the case. That was me. not the case. I, I'll never forget. It was a game. Uh, I think I want to say uh, IUPUI. I had 40. I, had, I caught the ball. I got a double. I passed it to John. And John looked at me and passed it right back. It was like, if you don't go score. Right. <laughs> and and <laughs> I had guys like that. Right. Like, the guys that didn't care if they had four points to 30 points. It was just if we win. Right. Everybody wins. They and put the and team I in think back. that's that's what people don't see, you know, in in the professional sports it's like stat hunting is is true. Right. I mean everybody stat hunts. That's mm-hmm. how we get paid. Exactly. Yeah. You got to. But at the professional level it's not it's not it's not about the team anymore. Mm-hmm. Now it's about oh, I got to feed my fam. Right. I got to feed I got to feed this person and this person mm-hmm. and this person. So now all of a sudden the jealousy starts creeping in. Right. So at the professional level it's totally different, but in the college level it's so much easier because everybody has one goal. Mm-hmm. And that's the I mean at the time it was win the Big Ten championship, win the Big Ten tourney, win our region, win the and then uh, win the national championship. That was mm-hmm. always the goal. But you know in the, at the professional level you don't know. Right. You you yeah. So go ahead, boy. I about to say. You mentioned Thad Mata, man. How was it? I mean, Thad was a freaking legend. Man, you Thad know? was the man, man. I, 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 I still talk to him to this day. Uh, Thad is, is the man. Uh, the thing about Thad is he lets the players play. Right. He hardly ever says anything. Uh, and you kind of you kind of police yourself. So, in a sense, you kind of had like a, um, a professional feel to the locker room mm-hmm. where if you messed up, it wasn't. Thad didn't have to do the punishment. Dave Lighty did the punishment. John Diebler did the punishment. Right. Dallas Lauderdale did the punishment. William Buford did the punishment. Mm-hmm. Like, those guys took care of us. So, um, I think that's what made Thad uh, Thad, and he just, you know, everybody loves him, man. It's, it's kind of it's weird. It's almost like how Jim Trussell is looked upon. Right. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, you know, how Urban Meyer is looked upon. Like, these guys just – the way they have with the players, you know, right. the way we show love to them is the exact same way that the fans, you know, right. they get to learn who Thad Mata, who Jim Trussell, who Urban Meyer is, right. is by through us. I'm, I'm going to get on Thad here in, in, in a minute because well, I want to hit on him a little bit more, man. That is, that's my dog. Mm-hmm. I love that. Um, but your freshman year, man, you, you had so much success. You bought. Uh, Big Ten player of the year. Like, what was the adversity that you experienced your freshman year, if any at all? Do you think it was like, you know, it was smooth sailing? I got these older cats around me. I'm just going out doing my thing. It was the grind of the season, man. Right. Like, you, you go from high school uh, into college, it's a totally different season. Because mm-hmm. now it ain't you go to school, show up to open gyms, occasionally show up to lifts. Like, no. You go <laughs> to lifts, you go to open gym, you go to tutoring, you go back to your dorm do it all again the next day right like it's really it's a, a job it's a job it's a job and that nca commercial is bullshit because that right. oh, <laughs> that's not how it is right. that's, right. that's not right. how it is because right. <laughs> they they didn't tell you you got to wake up at 5 a.m for right. strength and conditioning yeah. they don't tell you that they don't tell you that right after uh strength and conditioning you got to go to fucking tutoring right. and then go to class. And then after class, you got to come back to the gym, work out. <laughs> and then after going back to the gym and working out, you got to go, gotta go back, to, back to class or tutor. <laughs> they, don't, they don't show that. Right. They don't show that. But, I mean, that that's 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 pretty much what it is, man. Right. It really, I mean, I, I really can't explain it. It's hard to explain. It, it is, especially if you ain't ever really been through it. Yeah. Um, it's tough. So after your freshman year, you ball, you're – Supposed to be like this lottery pick, mm-hmm. uh, but you said fuck that. You know what? I'm coming back to school, man. What okay, went into that right. decision? And you guys had went to the Sweet 16. You, you guys had a hell of a year, right? I thought I was. I at, at the time I wasn't ready. Mm-hmm. I just knew I wasn't ready. If I if, as bad as I was coming out uh, in my four years in Boston, as and, you know, I, as undisciplined as was, not being a pros pro, like if I'd have came out my my freshman year, mm-hmm. I think I'd have been a hundred times worse. I don't even think I would be here right now if I was, if I came out my freshman year. So that sophomore year was kind of like the warm up, learn how to handle money and uh, shout out J Cole, <laughs> right? You know, it it was like the it really was the warm up. You know what I'm saying? Handle money, paying rent on time. Mm-hmm. You know, paying your cell phone bill because now I'm away from my. So I started learning how to handle my finances. Right. 
then you get to the next level. You fuck them up your first year like everybody right. does. <laughs> but <laughs> got that bag, ain't nobody right, had. Right, right, right. <laughs> Especially from you know the yeah. way we grew up. Yeah. You know, you coming from nothing to something. Right. You, you got to blow the bag the first year. No doubt. But <laughs> that that was that was one of the biggest reasons why I came back, man. Because I just wasn't ready. I just knew I wasn't ready. Man, and, and I remember you know thinking like when everybody announced it was announced that you were coming back. I mean, what the hell is going on? And <laughs> I, I know obviously like you just said, you coming from situations that ain't the prettiest. Mm. I'm like, damn, we got a chance to go get a, a mean one right now. Instantly in my mind, I'm not looking at, obviously, what you're going through, and I don't know mm-hmm. at the time. It's like, shit, go get that. Go the get dollar sign. Everybody said that. Everybody said that. <laughs> Everybody said that. But it was just – it wasn't It wasn't fit. Right. It wasn't fit. It wasn't right fit. So, so you, you come back to school. You guys have an even better year. You guys make the Final Four. Um, man, what was t- – talk about that because obviously we just had a tournament in. How is it when you're in that mentality – uh, where it's like shit, our back is against the wall. We got a ball, or we going home, yeah. man. And but you, you playing like every other day. That shit. Crazy. Every game, every game matters, man. Every game matters, and and the thing is, it's like every second, you just see it. Mm-hmm. You see, you see what you got to do. You you know what you got to do, and you ain't got time for fuck ups or my bads. Right. Like the my bads is <laughs> hey. fine. You throw them shits out the door because right. as soon as you say my bad, sub, get out. You you fucking up because we don't have time mm-hmm. to fuck up in the NCAA tournament because if you if you fuck up you're gone. Right. It ain't like the in the NBA playoffs where you got seven games. Mm-hmm. You got one game to survive. One. So as we was going through the the tournament, you know the first game I forget I think we played La Loya, I think the first game mm-hmm. we beat them. Next game is Gonzaga. Now we we in a dog fight because Gonzaga came out and they fighting. They big. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're physical. Uh, then you got the thing that really changes in the NCAA tournament is now the refs are different. So what you used to in the Big Ten, right. you might get an ACC ref. You might get a Pac-12 ref. And no offense to the ACC or Pac-12. Soft. That's pretty goddamn soft, bro. <laughs> I mean, this is some soft-ass shit that goes on. Right. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, in the Big, tw- in Big Ten, then, right. man, yeah. listen. Like you got Wisconsin walking under uh-huh. you, you got you know Michigan. They beating you up with the baseline yeah. trap. You got Michigan State with the hard double. Like we went through some shit, right. and, and so when the refs changed, like all of a sudden the Big Ten has to like we lose our aggressiveness. Mm-hmm. So Gonzaga came out, we beat them. The next game is Cincinnati. Now everybody's talking about the inter, inter interstate matchup. We play in Cincinnati. There's a guy by the name of Yancey Gates. That I grew up playing against, mm-hmm. uh, you know. Now they're comparing, they're fighting me and him, me and him, me and him. We beat Cincinnati. Then we go to Syracuse. Now Syracuse is talking about the two, three zones going to bother us. Every player, every 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 round, somebody showed up. Mm-hmm. Somebody different showed up. It was in Cincinnati. It was Deshaun, you know. And Gonzaga, it was Evan Ravenel, Aaron Kraft. Uh, Syracuse, Lindell Smith Jr. Right. He gets gets hit in the eye. Goes in the back, gets stitches, and he comes out and hits like twelve straight. I never seen nothing like that. It's almost, <laughs> it's almost like they gave oh, him a five. shot or something. Right. Yeah, and he comes out twelve straight. We go to the final four. Get to the final four. You know, I, I still have uh, questions about some of the calls that was made in mm-hmm. in the final four, but that was one of the funnest moments uh, with with the team was going through that whole journey of Big Ten play, Big Ten tourney, and the NCAA final four because that's when you know. That's when teams really come together. Is right. when you come to conference plays, the the tournament plays. Like that's when you know who really rocks with who, right. who really fucks with who. Because mm-hmm. you know egos go out the door. We we all about winning at this exactly. point. Exactly, oh, yeah, for sure. That shit got to be uh, tough. I mean, obviously in, in college we don't have, or they got a playoff now, so it's a little bit different in football. But from the standpoint of, yeah, we about to get on this grind and everything is heightened mm-hmm. that much more. I mean, that got to be a cold feeling to be in. Mean, I love being in those pressure situations. Oh, yeah. And, and shit, you, you, you got to perform. Right. show you. You got to perform yeah, or else yeah. your car going to get keyed. For sure. <laughs> For sure. Right. So after that season, you obviously come out into the draft. You slid down the board a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um and that was due to some what, some, some back issues back or issues. whatever? Herniated disc. I had uh, L405 herniated disc. So – how was that when when you you going through that draft day, um, and, and you seeing your name slide down further and further? I kind of knew. I Did knew. You? I knew as I was going through through the draft process. I was going to work out for teams. Every team said, "Oh man, we love you, but oh, hit you with that, hit me with the butt." So you know how going through the professional right, level yeah. when it, when there's a butt, mm-hmm. 
and they they express the butt, yeah. that means it's some re- they really it's a really really high risk, right? You know what I'm saying? And and they're not really thinking about it. But uh, so I was going through the process, uh, and all the teams said what they said. And as draft day hit, I'm just watching. Everybody goes, this guy goes, this guy goes, this guy goes. And as we got closer to Boston. I said, and I knew I was like, I'm going to be a Boston Celtic. Mm-hmm. I just had a feeling because at the NBA draft combine, my first meeting was with Boston, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I never forget what Danny Ainge said. And Mike Zarin and his son Austin Ainge just was like, "We're 21. We know we ain't going to be able to get you, but we just wanted to meet you." Oh wow! And I was like, <laughs> "Okay, so we, you know, there we just is. we're having a friendly conversation." Yeah. I walk out. I'm like, Psh, according to what. All these draft boards say, I'm top 10. I ain't going to be able to see them. Uh-huh. And then, you know, draft night, 21, 21 pick, Jared Sollinger, Boston Celtics. I was like, wow. So it wasn't like you were, like, disgruntled or anything. It was like – I was happy. Because at the time, you didn't know if KG was coming back. Right. KG was kind of in that limbo. And then all of a sudden, I found out KG came back. And I had Brandon Bass as, a, as another vet, Chris Wilcox. And all of a sudden, things just got – more exciting because I was like, I don't care if I play or not. Right. I just get yeah. to learn. Exactly. I get to watch these guys uh, battle every day in practice. I mean, it was to a point where, like, it was one practice that I was sitting on the sideline just watching the whole damn time <laughs> because as vets, you know, as vets, they want all the reps. Exactly. Because oh, yeah. it's their time to get in shape. Mm-hmm. You know, when you really up there in age, you know, KG was in his, what, 15th or 16th year. Um, he ain't going as hard as he used to. You right. don't have to be in shape. He knows what he has to do to get in shape. But he doesn't. He's not doing that extra, extra, extra mile mm-hmm. because he's too old. He like just exhausts himself. Yeah, yeah. So you just watch KG in practice and in and tra- training camp, and you're just like, damn. Well, I mean, dude, slow down. <laughs> like he's yelling at Doc because Doc took him out of practice. So he starts mimicking everything on the sideline as if he was me. Mm-hmm. I was like, that was the one time I realized I was like, that's why he's the great. He's one of the greatest players to ever play the game, is because that work ethic right there. You can't stop him. That's cold, and to be able to experience that. Back to the, the draft, my shit was a little bit different coming out of the draft. I was – Y'all kind of had the same – Yeah, kind of yeah, the same thing. I mean, I was thing. supposed to be his top ten pick. Mm-hmm. I'm sliding, 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 um, and I ended up going second to last pick in the first round. I was pissed. Dude, I didn't go uh, out and celebrate and do nothing. <laughs> hey, I went to sleep after the draft. I was pissed too. <laughs> <laughs> that's my man. Right. My, my dog going right. top ten. Right. Yeah. Right. I was right. salty. But it, it was kind of a similar situation, as you mentioned, with, with Danny Ainge and meeting him in the pre draft process. I met Rod Graves, and I met, uh, who was the head coach at the time, Kim Wizenhunt, in the draft process. We're like, we, we 31. We know we ain't going to be able to get you. But then Wiz says, but when we do get you, do, do you want to be called Chris or Beanie Wells? And I'm like, wow. what the fuck? And then lo and behold, I end up going to these dudes. That shit was mind blowing as hell. So it was kind of a similar situation. But but back to you know Boston. What was it like being with Rondo, Paul Pierce, and, and KG? I mean, great vets, great vets, great vets, man. Honestly, um, was Big Baby a part of that crew too? No, I okay. didn't get Big Baby, right. but I got I got uh, I got them three, and and Jason Terry is another one. Uh, I always mention Chris Wilcox. Uh, them five, uh, top five. Does top KG five. talk as much shit? Yes. Yeah, so he, he, he's, he's real Anything life. Anything is possible. <laughs> hey, listen. <laughs> I can't make this up. If you don't believe me, I'll call somebody right now on this podcast. <laughs> right now. He, We was playing. They was shooting dice on the plane. Uh-huh. I'll never forget that. Shooting <laughs> dice. And we we're flying from Boston to Milan, I want to say. We was going to Milan. They shooting dice. Still shooting dice. All of a sudden, it's like 3 o'clock in the morning, and you just hear somebody yelling, Ah! <laughs> I'm the only motherfucking defensive player of the year on this motherfucking plane. Hold them goddamn dice. Hold them goddamn dice. <laughs> and so you just hear him yelling, right. Hold them goddamn dice. <laughs> and he, man, everything he does when he's if it's competing, cards, dice, sprints, lifting, it's like that. Right. It's like that. He's Super just competitive. Intense. He just he's competitive as hell, man. That's, That's what what's makes up. those those few yeah, yeah, yeah. different, man. Yeah. They got that little edge in their mind, man. They got a missing fuse, right. man. That's a missing. <laughs> man. For you to do that at three thirty in the morning on a plane where everybody's sleeping, you wake up everybody. That's a different fuse, right? Man. KG is <laughs> KG's different, and and he's different. He's he's so different to the point where like. Man, he's not intelligent. Then he hits you with some intelligent shit, right? Because he reads. Mm-hmm. He, he he just he's a smart he's a smart ass individual. 
I'll give it to him. He's a smart ass individual. Paul Pierce, man. <laughs> <laughs> Truth. That's your boy, man. Yeah, man. P was P was a good guy. P was a good guy. Uh, fucking one so, of the biggest haters. So hey, that's why I'm about to get on, man. <laughs> that's why I wanted to get on, man. You know, this guy's, you know, he's always talking about somebody. <laughs> you know, his career this, his career that. Now he got this thing where he's saying that he could have had a better career than D Wade. He said he did, he have, did a have a better career career than uh, D Wade. But then this, this is what I don't get. <laughs> he say if I would have had LeBron James, if I would have had – bro, but he had all them people. True. But <laughs> th- I'm not – listen, first of all, I am not agreeing with – I'm not agreeing or disagreeing with any statement right now. <laughs> but, <laughs> throwing it out there. But I'm throwing it out there. But, but P, KG, and Ray went past their prime. It was past their prime. So KG came to the Celtics at 32-33. He was he – I was get old. what you're saying. Okay. Paul, Paul was – a little older too. Ray was a little older. Now, there was injuries that happened in game in in 2010 that didn't allow them to win. I think Kendrick Perkins getting hurt. Then they had to defend uh, use Rasheed Wallace, Big Baby. Even though Doc didn't really use Big Baby in that in the finals of 2012. In 09, KG got hurt with the knee injury, mm-hmm. and in 2011. I forget what happened in 2011. I think they lost to the Heat. And in 2012, they lost. To, they was up 3-2, lost because Brown went crazy in game six. And then Chris Bosh hit crazy, two crazy threes in the corner to put him away in game seven. So I'm not saying – I'm not agreeing. I'm not <laughs> disagreeing. But I'm just saying in them timelines of them playing together, even though they got one championship, they had a lot of shit that went on in, in that time. So – at the end of the day, <laughs> this argument is here. Who had a better career? Man, listen. D-Wade was my favorite player. And I say this. D-Wade is a top – see, people don't agree with this, but D-Wade is the, top, is the third best shooting guard of all time. Oh, I agree 100%. Yeah. Some people put AI above him. But I put D-Wade above, above AI. D-Wade is top three shooting guard of all time. <laughs> You go Mike, Kobe, Wait. D-Way. Yeah. Now you go to small forward. Y'all can do the math. <laughs> so if, you, if if we do that, yeah. if we do just by by, by position, not right. by not by you know head to head, by position yeah. of the rankings, D-Way is top three. Paul, he ain't top three. He ain't top five in this position. Yeah, no, he's not. Yeah, so that's, that's uh, the way and, and I the thing, but I don't down. even got an issue with with Paul Pierce. Uh, coming out and, and you know comparing his career, but my thing is, he be bro, hating, bro, just don't throw nobody else and discredit them. Like you had your time, bro. We know you were a damn good player, Paul Pierce. You wanted you were top top fifty, top seventy five player in the league. I'll give you top seventy five hey. all time or yeah. his time of playing because he was deadly. He was deadly. I I give I give him top seventy five of all time. Yeah, top uh, seventy five. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, so, so check this out. So Not top 50, though. I was tripping. <laughs> I seen a stat, man. I was cracking up when I seen this, man. They put a list of uh, – they had Kobe on there. They had Dirk on there. D-Wade. And they had Paul on there. And it was everybody's uh, final career game. Kobe <laughs> dropped 60. D-Wade, D-Wade. dropped 30. Mm-hmm. Dirk dropped 20. Mm-hmm. Paul Pierce had zero. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> to his defense, bro, they was in the playoffs. They was in the playoffs that year. So? <laughs> hey, Draymond Green said it best, man. <laughs> bro, you not Kobe, bro. You know what I'm Even saying? Like, you, you, ain't, you ain't getting no – ain't nobody showing you no love. True, <laughs> true. At that time, true. But it was in the playoffs, man. His game mattered more than the, the other three. Oh, okay. D Wade was eliminated already. Dirk was eliminated, and Kobe was eliminated. That's true. Paul had a game that mattered. That, that's oh, true. Okay. I will give you that. But this, again, I'm not agreeing or disagreeing with your statement. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We, we got some NBA news that just happened that I think shocked the hell out of everybody. Um, certainly me. Magic Johnson, Johnson stepping down as the president of the Lakers. You know, a lot of people thought. With Magic being the president, 
them getting LeBron, that was a recipe for instant success as soon as LeBron got there, even though they didn't have all the pieces to the puzzle. Now we're looking in year two of that, or sorry, year one of that relationship, Magic decides to step down. I mean, is this like the LeBron the LeBron effect because we've seen him and his impact on, you know, GMs and front office people and coaches? Or is it something more that Magic said, you know I just, what, man, I don't want to be I a part think of with Magic, I think with Magic, I just think he has so many ventures of business mm-hmm. to the point where he can't fully commit to what he needs to do as president of basketball operations. Like, I can only give you an example, or two examples. Like Masai from Toronto, the GM. Mm-hmm. I mean, he has a couple of side things that he does, but, I mean, he's at games. Right. He's at – He's at almost every game. He's he's out there scouting. Um, he's he's watching other NBA games of players he might want to trade for. I don't know if Magic had the time to do that because mm-hmm. Magic is what he owns the Sparks. Um, he's part owner of the Dodgers, Dodgers. right? I mean, he has so many Starbucks and so much. Yeah, other he shit. has so many things that he had his time. You know, goes to other things that he's not able to do the office hours that he needs to do to be a basketball, the director of basketball operations. I think that's the biggest reason why he stepped down. So you think it was a smart move then for him? I, I think it game. was a smart move for the organization in in whole because you know when you put your trust in somebody uh, to form a team, I need you to be able to form the team. Did you locked in? And, and I need you locked in a hundred percent of the time. I don't mm-hmm. think Magic had time to put a hundred percent of his efforts behind. Being the director of basketball operations. When you break it down from that perspective, I, I could definitely see it and understand it. Um, we're going to play a cut right, right here from Magic. So today, I'm going to step down as the president. And um, I think I don't want to, her and I have such an amazing relationship. And I think that um, she gave me full power to do what I wanted to do. But I think that. Uh, with her and I, I want to always preserve our relationship and, and love her. And then I think that I had more fun when I was able to be the big brother and ambassador to everybody. And, and, and that right there, man, that, that really spoke volumes to me, too. It's like, because if your brother is the head of your business, right, and he's the decision maker, and he fucking up, and he know he fucking up. Or he know he's not all the way there giving you 110%. It's going to make your relationship strain even more. It's so, going to be better. Right. It's going to be so real better. I, I get it from that perspective and that side mm-hmm. of him not wanting to continue on in that role. I get it. I, 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 I really do get it. But I think Magic really thoroughly enjoys watching basketball. Mm-hmm. Like he – think about it. If Michigan State was at the Final Four, he, normally he's always at the Final Four supporting Coach Izzo. But unfortunately, with him being the director of basketball operations – you know, they could be um, not – I won't say tampering rules, but there, there's some fines that, that mm-hmm. can happen because you might, you might come across Winston's, Winston, uh, Winston's uh, mom or somebody. Right. And you might say hi just off the strength of, I'm Magic Johnson, I went to Michigan State. But if somebody catches that on camera, mm-hmm. that's a $50,000 fine. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, that's crazy. Yeah. So it, it's just – it's little stuff like that that it, as you've seen when Magic was being the director of basketball operations that he wasn't able to do. Right. Like the little stuff like that he wasn't able to do, and he misses it, obviously. So you don't think it had nothing to do with LeBron? What no, no LeBron effect? I won't, I won't put, the, <laughs> I won't put no, I, because I, the thing with Bron, I don't think Bron could push over Magic. Right. Just because either. it's Magic Johnson. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like, they had a respect. Magic there. went and got him. Yeah. Like, it's, yeah. So I don't think, I don't think it was that. I just think Magic just didn't have the time. To be the person that the Lakers need. That's right. a great point. At this time, mm-hmm. That's a great at this point. time, they need somebody to be able to form a, a team and be able to look for the future, not for right now, but for the future. Because every time the Lakers lose a star, they lose a little bit in a couple years, and mm-hmm. then they build it back up. Right. But yeah. they need something that will be stable for years on. Right. No, I, mean, I, I agree 100 percent, man. Smart assessment. I, initially, I was disappointed with Magic stepping down because I thought it was a recipe for success that was there that was gonna obviously after this year and hopefully them getting AD, it's gonna be looking pretty good. And I want him to be a part of that. And, and I didn't even think about like you know, like you said, man. He has so much other stuff going on, so much ownership and all too much. Stuff. You know what I'm saying? It's it's, it's probably super duper tough for Can him. Just to be imagine the GM and in, in, in the at the Browns doing all the. 
Right. Doing everything. Yeah, I mean, the Browns will, will have his head. <laughs> the Brownies will have his head. That's your squad, right? No. My squad <laughs> is the Denver Broncos. <laughs> I hate to say it, but Cleveland second. Cleveland second. I give Cleveland second. But, but Broncos. Jumping on that bandwagon, it's all good. Nah, I've been a Broncos fan, baby, since 97. <laughs> but, but Dipping back to back to legends, man, I want, I want to hit back on uh, – like I said, I bounce around a ton of this shit, so it may be hard to stay on track. Oh, that's easy. Dipping back to Ohio State, um, I want to hit on a little bit more of Thad Mata. People really, at the end of his career, it was so disrespectful, in my opinion, because of everything that he had done, where you had fans. I was hosting that 97-1 of the fan at the time. Fans calling in, talking about we need to fire Thad, we need to move on from Thad. I was of the belief that when you've done so much and you have pit a school essentially on the map, and let's be all the way honest. I mean, when you look, who was the coach before Thad O'Brien? Mm-hmm. He wasn't what that model was. Ohio State basketball wasn't all the way there since like Scooney and Michael Red. Mm-hmm. So when you had done so much to build a program up and he's one of the all-time winning his coaches, not just Ohio State history, but Big Ten history, I'm like, shit, this dude, he can ride off in the sunset. Yeah, he's going to experience a couple of bad years. That happens in basketball. Let him build it back up. Mm-hmm. What were your thoughts on that? Were you kind of, you know, disheartened to see him go? It's my coach, man. Right. I, was, I was hurt. <laughs> I was hurt. I really was. But the, the, the thing that people don't understand is look at the scandal that came out mm-hmm. and look how Ohio State never once popped into the, any of those scandals. Tuh. That's the reason why. His the 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 guys that we recruited, mm-hmm. we went after clean cut guys. Like there was no there was there's nothing that you hear about Thad giving out money. Right. Like when Thad got Greg O and Mike Conley, he got them for free. <laughs> I don't know how many times I gotta tell people right. that. When he got me, he got me for free. <laughs> he could he, he paid his dues by coaching my knucklehead oldest brother, uh. JJ. He paid his dues and he got me. Right. So <laughs> You know People what? don't understand that. You know, that was one of my questions I had. You know, we get a lot of top players from Ohio that, you know, that, that go to other schools. Right. You know, I was – me, as a – you know, as a fan, I I wonder why. Like, why I, the guys – like, even even your boy Trey. You know what I'm saying? The thing is, Trey – if y'all seen Trey – My bad. No, that was a different situation, too. Yeah. That is a different situation because if you've seen Trey – his junior year, and then you seen Trey's senior year, it was too late. Trey changed every year. It right. was like at one point Trey was too small. Mm-hmm. He wasn't fast enough. And all of a sudden Trey grew. He got bigger. He got more athletic. He started dunking. By then it was too late. He committed to Penn State. So once Penn State, once the whole that Sandusky shit popped. I never even knew that. Yeah, that Sandusky shit popped. He, he decommitted. It was too late. Yeah. Dad didn't have no scholarships. So – that's what happened. That's why Trey went from Columbus Northland to the school up north. Yeah. That's the only reason why. See, that's what I was going to ask you, man. I, I always thought it was one of those situations where, all right, Trey was passed up for Aaron Kraft. Kraft is one of the best players that we've had come through the school right. and in terms of steals, right. assists, and all that. But when you watch that boy Trey play at Michigan, yeah. it like, what the fuck did we miss on the food <laughs> in our backyard, man? But, How did we not get this cat? And that, 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 that's what made me ask the question. Yeah. yeah, I mean, but we can we can keep going. Karis Levert, that plays for the Brooklyn Nets. Mm-hmm. He he's in our backyard, right? He, Rozier, Terry Rozier. Yeah. I mean, guys like that. I mean, it was just it was just hard. It was just hard because it's like you see it, but he doesn't have it right now. Right. Wow. And I think with Trey, he didn't have it right then and there for for Thad to be like, here you go. Right. And and it's understandable, but I don't think it will work out the same. Who says Trey would be in the NBA playing for the right. Dallas Mavericks? Exactly. That, I agree. And, and that's what people need to understand is, like, it's not about it being in your backyard. It right. got to be about a fit for you. Super right. fit. And it was yeah. perfect for Trey because when when he went to the school up north, Darius Morris declared for the draft. Yeah. And so right then and there, he walked into a starting spot. Right. Unlike Aaron Kraft, Aaron Kraft had to play – I mean, that started me, John, Will, Dave, and Dallas – by the four by that media timeout, Kraft will come in for Dallas, and that was our five. Mm-hmm. Like I mean, he played starter minutes, right. but that I mean, that's just how it was. I mean, it's just all about the fit. That's and I thought sport, the fit though. was perfect for him. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I agree. When you really break it down, I don't think he would have had the same success right away that he had at Michigan. Um, it, it, it was a beast, though. When you look at this basketball program now uh, with Coach Holtman, him being able to go out and 
uh, in back-to-back years. Last year, won the Big Ten, uh, was able to get to the tournament. Mm-hmm. This year, we just snuck by and got into the tournament. I mean, what's your outlook and what's your thought on him and what he's going to be able to do he's for the huge. future? He's huge for our, our program, man, for us to go from uh, Fad to Holtman. Uh, couldn't ask for a better situation because Holman is 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 almost like identical to that. He demands his guys to be at class. He demands these guys to go to tutoring. He demands these guys to give one hundred and ten percent, not only off the floor but on the floor. Um, those things right there uh, really change his programs because mm-hmm. um, you know who says we could we can grab some we could have grabbed anybody and they could have came in here and just destroyed everything. Right. And the thing with Holman, he wants he wants the alumni to come back. You can't ask that for everybody. Right. Like, yeah. Holman says, I want y'all to come back. I want y'all in the gym. I want y'all playing against our guys. I want you to be, in, you know, That's a involved. Sweet deal. Yeah. And and with, with with that being said, like, you know, that, that kind of, like, helps recruiting. Mm-hmm. Um, just just being there and just, you know, it, whenever the guys need help, you – you shoot him some knowledge, right? And, and you know, and it's 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 open doors over there, and for him to keep the doors open, it's only going to enhance what we got going, right? Uh, going into the future. I mean, if you look at this, it, what he did this past year. I mean, we we lost Michael Potter, and uh, and we we was down a big, and Kayla Wesson got you know got That's suspended for a couple games. But if you watch them games, you know them freshmen really grew up throughout the year mm-hmm. and and that's a big time because his player development is being, is is huge. That's critical, man. And they brought they put Scooney on staff too, which yeah. is which is that's dope. dope. That's yeah. huge. That's huge. Big time. Yeah. Cuz with Scooney, and I'm hoping Scooney gets the assistant job because I always say the kids might not know Scooney, but I promise you their parents and their grandparents do. Mm-hmm. And and that's huge right. cuz we remember school, you know, even so, though they yeah. they put the asterisk by their final four. Right. It's still there. <laughs> exactly. We know it's still happened. there. We know it happened. You know, Scooney, Mike, you know, Jason Singleton, uh uh Ken Johnson, uh George Reese, like they still up there, man. They still and, up and there. You know how Scooney is too. Yeah. He go he gonna shoot you straight. He gonna shoot you all the way straight <laughs> with that with that old accent of his. Right. Yo, Shine, come on, Shine. Come on, Shine. Hey, so so you talk about like being said we bounce around. I just wanna hear about like your recruiting process. Like, did you have like when did you know that you was gonna go to go to Ohio State? Like, do you had any other schools that you considered? That you know? was that was smart enough to brainwash my oldest brother JJ. He was smart <laughs> enough. To, he, he was smart enough to brainwash my oldest brother. Man, my brother, I never forget. It was they was playing against uh, Georgetown, second round, oh six, uh, in Dayton, and uh, we simultaneously meet at half court. Do usual, give him a hug, and he's like sad. He said, if any. If Coach Mata offers you a scholarship, take it. Because there's no coach like Coach Mata. I'll never forget it. And I just, you know, me being the younger brother, okay. <laughs> <laughs> next year, around the same time next year, Coach Mata offered me a scholarship. I was like, I'll take it. And from there, you know, ninth grade on, I didn't have no recruiting process. It was tough. My dad was my high school coach. So everybody was calling my dad at like 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the morning. Hey, is Jared up? You know, we can call you. Da-da-da. My dad used to turn his phone off, everything, <laughs> man. It was, it was crazy. So I wanted to end it just because they was calling too much. Did you ever, did you have did you feel pressured though? No, I didn't feel pressure. But I I'm gonna tell you what Billy Donovan put a lot of pressure on me, man. Billy Donovan offered me before Thad Mata, and this is fresh off the back to back championships. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> I was really fucked up in the head at the moment. I was like, oh, it's Florida, it's Florida. It's Florida. And I'm like, they just won the national right. so I'm like, I was really fucked up in the head about it. And then uh, I was like, you know what, fuck it. I'm going to go to House State. And just because I said I was going to do it. Thank God, man. Thank God. Uh, right, right. <laughs> but, man, what I really want to hit on, too, man, is the fact that you just mentioned your dad was your coach. Your dad is a fucking legend at Ronald State. If y'all don't know who his dad is, Satch Ellinger. All world basketball coach, uh, and, and touched so many young lives through basketball. Yeah. Um, how was that growing up? Your dad being your coach, staying on you, and then having your brother JJ as your brother and being able to help mold you and kind of guide you. And JJ wild as hell. So I, I can only imagine the stories that you got with him. Yeah, man. man. <laughs> yeah, man listen, the the hardest part was my dad. Man, he we used to. Go by saying you play the game the way you live your life. If you're late taking out the trash, you're gonna be late in your rotations oh, in the fourth <laughs> quarter. He said, "What, what, what? In crunch time, what natural comes out?" So he says, "If you're always late turning your assignments, you're gonna be late going to your box out." So it's like 
It was like little stuff that he always beating our heads, beating our heads, beating our heads. And then as you get older, you actually see what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. You see what he's talking about, man. And when he says play the game the way you live your life, I mean, it's true, man. Right. It's yeah. really true. So growing up with my dad, it was just like it was always life lessons. He was, we call them satchisms. You know, he <laughs> always has some type of wisdom to hand off to somebody in, in whatever situation. What people don't know is my dad growing up, he was he was he was pretty fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Um, he was really fucked up. I and mean, if you read his book, you know, he sold drugs, you know, got caught, blah, blah, blah. He changed his life around. And and uh, so when he speaks from the hood perspective, I can I can kind of kind of agree with him. I right. understand where he's coming from. <laughs> no, that's dope, man. But what about JJ, man? Oh. T tell me, how, how was that growing up and then watching him kind of be recruited and watching him have all this success in high school and get to college and and now it's like you know what I got to follow after my brother man it's just if you if you understand him and who he is you'll understand why you won't do 75% of the things that he does <laughs> right. you know what i'm saying like yeah. it's just certain shit you just don't do right. you know what i mean and my brother my brother going in high school man he 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 bounced around with the Brookhaven high school then he went from Brookhaven to Bishop Hartley and in his last two years he finished at Thomas Worthington where my nephew right now is playing and you know when he went from Bishop Hartley to Thomas Worthington all of a sudden he was like a god everybody loved him he was this he was that and he was wear he wore two bit two different pair of shoes. He switched <laughs> shoes at halftime. Oh. Like, he was just, he's always been like that. He's right. always been Hollywood, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so when you watch him, you be like, man, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be nothing, you know what I'm saying? Right. I don't want to be nothing like that. I love his game, but I don't want the extra shit. With right, he got a larger you know life personality. He got man. a lot of, he got a lot of extra shit. Rob. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was, he was, he was so extra. And he, he, that was his way of playing the game. And uh, growing up through his recruiting process, like, he had, you know, Ohio State didn't want him at first. Jim O'Brien didn't want him at first. They wanted him to go to prep school because, they, you know, they loved Matt Sylvester that was playing down in Cincinnati. And so my brother going through the recruiting process, everybody came swooping in from the max, and all of a sudden Nolan Richardson comes in from Arkansas. So he goes to Arkansas. Nolan Richardson gets fired. He goes, Dad, I want to be a Buckeye. My dad calls Jim O'Brien. Jim O'Brien was like, "Shit, he basically did his year of prep school. <laughs> Come, Come on, on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Come on." Dope. And so that was that was his scholarship, and then that's how he got to Ohio State. And then Thad came right after Jim O'Brien got fired, and then he fell in love with Thad. And Thad, that's how Thad. I'm telling you, that's how Thad recruited me by brainwashing my brother. <laughs> the rest is history. If y'all don't know, man, and y'all have never been on the Buckeye cruise, that's go on the Buckeye cruise. <laughs> and there's one person that you're going to notice. At some point on that damn he's crew, loud. Boy, JJ. he's loud. That's JJ. He gonna always have his shirt off, man. <laughs> and some, Turk. And some shorts crazy be shorts. <laughs> yeah. That's him. That's him. A super good dude, man. That's, That's him. Super That's good him. dude. That was like my first time because I I went to Buckeye Cruise this year, and that was like my first time like being around. Oh, experience yeah. being around, hanging with him, man. He's yelling, dude, dude, screaming, crazy, man. Yelling, screaming. That's that's how it was in our household, man. With him and my older brother Julian, you know. You just had a whole bunch of personalities. Well, I want you to play a cut real quick, Will. Um, hit on this March Madness. I made a, I, I was killing Boom for hey. what he did on this bracket, <laughs> and he he did this shit by accident. He just threw out a name out there. Man, play this cut real quick, and then tell me what your thoughts are <laughs> not only of the cut but what happened in the national <laughs> championship. You got Virginia. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Virginia. Man, have you not watched Virginia the past couple of years? Hell, hey. Virginia almost lost. Hey. Who was it, the Gardner Webb that they played just over the weekend? Hey. Virginia hey. sucks. Check that. I'm not going to say they sucks because they are, I believe, a, a they one scrappy. or two seed. <laughs> Virginia is always a team in the play in the, in the tournament. Boom, they may Who win. Who you got in your final four, man? They may win one or Who two games. Who you got in your final four, man? But Virginia is a team. When you're doing a bracket, you can never count on those <laughs> guys to make it. <laughs> Down so, the stretch because they always falter. So, always, man. Well, so, hey. you gotta read, I mean, so when, when you're doing your bracket and you got Virginia up there, even though they had one seed, are you picking them to make I'm it? I'm not really confident. I'm going to be the first one to tell you I'm not confident in Virginia. Yeah. And I'm still not confident how they won the national championship. Me either, man. Because – I to me, I think Matt Painter of Purdue, and I love Matt Painter. He's another guy that recruited me. I love him. He messed up. Like what if the whole game, that whole game, you know they was killing you on the glass. Why foul? Right. Why foul? So that that's one. Then the next one against uh uh who they play? Auburn. 
Ref misses double dribble. Why foul? Again, why foul? They got lucky. Why foul? You 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 had you hey. gave him time to set up a play on the other side of the court. Just guard it straight up, and then Texas Tech don't help out the corner. They got away with three things in in under, things. under thirty seconds. Under thirty seconds of all three of them games. Bro, they had a golden lord on their team, bro. Man, I'm listen. <laughs> I'm a fan of Kyle Guy. I like Kyle Guy. I like the. I forget the kids with the blonde hair. The I, golden lord. Yeah, him. <laughs> I like him, and I like Hunter. I like those guys, but I just don't the style of basketball and for the st- and for the the people that they have on their team, they could be they could be scoring in the eighties instead of forties. Right, like it's just but, it's but dry did that shit by accident. So I made him look hey, good. Hey, 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 he hey, did hey. it by accident. You didn't even know that they lost. It was okay. <laughs> I'm gonna admit. I'm going to admit. <laughs> I don't watch college basketball. Like he don't. So 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 Beans comes in and says, "You been watching the tournament?" I said, "You know, I, I seen a couple games. You know, I I, I, I ain't gonna lie, I don't know too much. You know." He like, "All right, so give me your final fourth. Uh, no, it was the elite eight at the time. So I'm like, all right. So I'm going online. I'm just looking. Like, hmm. You picking off colors and shit. <laughs> <laughs> I say, I say, all right, Beans. And then I, I figure it out, man. The, the four teams I had in the uh, in the tournament, I think two of them played each other, bro. So like, <laughs> so you really so I, I, like, hey, I really ain't know what I was doing, bro. So when I said it, I was like, I'm thinking in my head like, dang, I just put Virginia and Beans is on me right now. So I'm like, <laughs> they must be bad or somewhere. Like I don't know, they you know what I'm saying? But they just a team but, you don't pick in the tournament. But, but hey, <laughs> when they won, I'm like, yeah, Beans. <laughs> I told you. Part is he described them perfectly by saying they scrappy. <laughs> Ain't never seen it. Right. Is that that? So if you play that clip again, he sound right. right. You know he sound about. totally right. That's the that's, crazy that's part. That's the whole point, baby. That's crazy, bro. Yeah. Virginia, aren't they the first one seed to lose? To a uh, yes, to a last place. Yes, see, to yeah, to a sixth place. It's just gonna see first time. Did you do a bracket? Yeah, I did a bracket. My bracket was horrible because uh, Duke didn't do what they was. So you had Duke to. winning it. All. I had the monster. Yeah, I had the monster doing everything. Zion. What's what's your thought on Duke, man? And those those the young three headed. Well, they got four cats. That's so probably gonna get drafted. Um, but what's your, your thoughts on those young players, man? I, Zion was so unreal. To the point where he kind of took away from Cam Reddish. Mm-hmm. Cam Reddish is might be the most polished of the three. Mm-hmm. Cam and he doesn't get a lot of a lot of uh, uh, of talk just because R.J. Barrett is six seven, and he's left handed. He can shoot the shit out the rock when he when he's hot. He he can he can read the screen and rolls. You got Zion that you can't teach <laughs> what the hell he has. <laughs> like <laughs> you watch him, you see him, and you just. You can't teach that. Right. I, don't, I don't care wh- who you are. You can't teach what he has. He's six seven. He's two supposedly three hundred. Supposedly two eighty, <laughs> two eighty, and he moves like a gazelle. Right. Like you know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's you can't teach that. So as far as is them them three are they they're unbelievable. Right. I thought they had it. How you think he gonna be at the? Uh, Real quick, y'all level? keep going. I'm, I'm gonna take a little uh, break. Next Girl. level. Next level. He's gonna be special. He gonna be special because the space opened up. They got the defense in three seconds. Mm-hmm. He gonna he gonna kill. He gonna kill. Now now people ain't just gonna sit in his lap. Yeah. And he's gonna be able to post up mismatches because the league is going to a switch a switching type league. He gonna be able to run the flow. His his game's gonna be wide open. Just imagine Draymond Green on his uh when he has a high scoring game, and and just imagine Zion Williams when when he has a high scoring like just imagine that. Hey, you know what? I'm I'm, I'm getting off subject. You know, Day Day both. You know that that's our home. Yeah, that's, that's. Did you see his career going this way, bro? Yeah, I did because his brain was unbelievable. Right, his brain's unbelievable. And so, what he used to do, what I watched him in in AU. Yeah, I watched him in college, and I you know now, and he does the same things that he did in high school that he does now, because he, he all his all his attributes translate. All right. He don't. He doesn't do anything great. He does everything good. Well, that comes to another thing. You say it's all about the fit. So do you? Th- all right. So I guess the real question would be: Okay, so if you put if you put him on the freaking Cavaliers right now, will he be as successful? I mean, that's a good question. That's a good question because if you look at Day Day, he had he had higher offers 
to go somewhere else, but he decided uh, to go back the to rings, the Warriors. He, he, sw- he, he went the rings. Again, he's smart. Because like, <laughs> at the end of the day, you're still getting a bag. Yeah. And you already know, if you won the championships, that's going to bring you even more of the bag. Right. And it's going to keep you in the league longer. And you, San Francisco is now home. I don't think he's ever going to come back to the Midwest. Oh, San Francisco is home. man. No matter that what, he's he going to be – think about how – uh, Baron Davis walks in with the We Believe shirts. Yeah. You know, Matt Barnes, uh, the the Stephen Jackson. Just imagine how when when it's all said and done, they want to celebrate their 20th anniversary when Steph, Draymond, Clay, KD, uh, uh, all them guys, Andre Iguodala, Sean Livingston. When them guys come back, think about the impact that they're gonna have. Like that that Warriors team might be. You know, they're gonna be on their way of being something like like the Lakers. Right. Like the like the Celtics. I just think that culture that they have is gonna develop into something special. Yeah. So we had got into like basically I don't even know how Draymond Green's name came up, but I I was just saying 'cause we, we both know him. We right. all cool with him. Did did he expect his career to, to to go how it's going? Oh, I can't imagine that he did. I mean, I think Draymond Draymond is definitely a good player. Yeah. Um, but I can't imagine that he thought, you know what? I, 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 I yeah. He he thought he was gonna be a, a defensive three man. That was right. it. That was it. He didn't think about. Um, um, it's gonna be an eighty million dollar man. I don't think he thought that I, at all. I thought yeah. he. I thought for sure forty. Right. I thought for sure forty. But the, you know, the best thing that happened to him was the fit, man. Yeah, the fit was amazing, but freaking um, David Lee. Mm-hmm. Got hurt. Mm-hmm. Remember David, and that's when they developed small ball. And right. when they created small ball, you know everything translated They're throughout running. the NBA. Now everybody They're else running. wants to play small. Everybody's everybody's creating a roster to beat the Golden State Warriors. That's bro, it, bro. How how do you think Mark Jackson feels when he watches the Golden State Warriors and watches those guys win championship after championship? Because this is shit that he created essentially. Mm-hmm. Or do you think it was he wasn't really able to get him over the hump? I just think Mark Jackson. If you put Mark Jackson and you put Steve Kerr and you and they was on the same staff at the same time, I think this would have happened anyway. Mm-hmm. Because Mark Jackson, so you hear it all the time. Steve Kerr says, if it wasn't for Mark Jackson, mm-hmm. defensively we wouldn't be nowhere near as good. He always gives Mark Jackson credit right. about the defense. So the defensive side Mark Jackson had. It's the offensive side that Steve Kerr takes care of mm-hmm. because people forgot Steve Kerr was the GM of the Phoenix Suns when the Phoenix Suns had Steve Nash went back to back MVPs. Mm-hmm. People forget about that. Steve Kerr was the GM. He he that small ball, you know, being around Dan Tony, you know, he he was a, a offensive mind. Right. He was just an offensive mind, and that's what Steve Kerr brought to the the Golden State Warriors, and that's the reason why they they went crazy. Because if you think about it, the year before that, you know. Chris Paul, Blake Griffin, DeAndre Jordan, they was getting them up out of there. Remember that? <laughs> that, that used to be a great series. For right. the, you know what I mean? And then all of a sudden, the Clippers couldn't do nothing with the Warriors. It was like a, a thing clicked. And all of a sudden, like, Steph is, is doing all, you know, making CP, you know, mm-hmm. almost fall. And then, like, you got, you know, Blake Griffin can't be as dominant against Draymond. Like, they just hit a, a, a button and it just switched. Which is a beautiful thing to see in NBA, man. I, I love watching sheer dominance. I love teams come from nothing and all of a sudden, you know, stake their claim and say, you know, we're here, we've arrived. I love that shit. Mm-hmm. Um, switch it up a little bit. I know we're going we to get out of here, man. I know we've been going on the road. But we can't leave without talking Ohio State football. Um, we got the spring game this weekend. You going? Mm. Oh, I just figured out it's the spring <laughs> game. I might have to go there. You know, I just got – hey, listen, I'm still oh, in China. Right. Time. You French. I'm still on China. Fresh. I'm in China right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know. I, let me right. – shoot. So, so, with Ohio State football, obviously, new coach Ryan Day. Um, and, and I'd imagine you watched Urban Myers last year. You watch everything unfold. Um we don't have Dwayne Haskins. What's your thoughts on this football team and what you think we can be? Or you think you think I think Ohio we can State's be, be I think side? we can be special, man, because Ryan Day really showed his ass the first three games. Thank that you TCU. Very much. Man, he showed his ass, man. And, and, and the thing is, it's like I'm not saying Urban held us back, but when Urban came back, our offense wasn't the same. Right. Thank you. I agree. And uh, Buckeye fans, I know y'all love Urban, Urban Legend, but <laughs> I'm just saying. It is if, what it if is. If you watch yeah. our offense, if you watch our offense, man, it was a totally different offense the first three games. Mm-hmm. And then Urban came back, but that's just who Urban is. But Ryan Day is a fresh new offense. Mm-hmm. We're still going to have the same type of defense, and we still have the hold thing. On, hold, it, on, that, hold on, Our defense wasn't that good last year. 
So I hope we have a, a better defense this year. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't really. Yeah, it wasn't but that good. I, the integrity of the defense. Yeah, the yeah, integrity. Yeah, 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 when we needed a stop, they got a stop. Hey, I just had to put yeah, that out. When, they, <laughs> when we needed a stop, they gave us a stop. Right. That's how. That's that's Sometimes. what we need. You know what I'm saying? But we did miss. We did miss Bosa though, because Bosa was on the edge. It, them passes would not have been complete at all. Right. But I just think Ryan Day has a chance to be special because of what Urban Meyer already built. Mm-hmm. And Urban Meyer still being around. Mm. That's that, plays a, that plays a big part. That plays a big part because when Ryan Day gets into a rut, he can always call Urban. Mm-hmm. And Urban can always get him out that rut. Right. Or, hey, Ur, this guy ain't acting right. Can come to, he can come talk. Like, he's part of the university mm-hmm. now. That Urban has solidified himself as – Ohio he, State ambassador. He's grandfather right Yeah, now. He, he's an ambassador yeah, yeah. of our football team. Yeah, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? When That's you, why I was smart for Gene. Yeah. So, on board. so when you see when you see people like who who's like an ambassador at other other teams of uh, college football, you don't see that often. Right. That's huge. Mm-hmm. That's huge for recruiting. Oh, I, was, I was just about to say that I think it's very big for recruiting. It's huge know. for recruiting to know that Urban's still around. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like that's huge. Yeah. But I really want to know how much you're gonna be around though, because he did take the job this season. With Fox Sports, so he's going to have to be gone. So I, that's going to be an interesting dynamic and see how all that unfolds. But give me your number one thing that you want to see out of the spring game, man. Um, you know, I got to start at my position. Uh, we all know uh, J.K. is going to be the guy. Um, but you know, you, you know, at Ohio State, we always have a, a two punch. So I'm looking forward to seeing who that who that who that backup will be, the guy to step up. Also, I want to see the whole defense. Um. You know, especially the linebacker position, the secondary, um, but overall, and yeah, obviously, uh, Fields. You know, him, him, this this being the first time him playing in front of Buckeye Nation. You know, see how he has I'm composure, and, you know, see how he handles that. it. Uh, but that's about it. That's tough. It's, it's just tough to follow somebody like Dwayne Haskins. So it's, yeah. it's, you know what I mean? It's just like. Is, I'm not comparing Dwayne Haskins to Michael Jordan by any means, <laughs> by any means. But I'm just saying, if you look at how LeBron, if you look at how everything is compared to MJ with LeBron, mm-hmm. and they're totally two different basketball players. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, MJ will MJ beat you with his pure dominance of scoring. Like he was just a pure mismatch problem. LeBron beat you with the all around. You know, I'll pass it. I'll rebound. I'll make the heady play. Oh, you think I'm taking this shot? No. Here go Kyle Corver in the corner. You think I'm going for the game winner? No. Here go Chris Bosh in the corner. Yeah. Like, that was – That was Bron right That's there. Bron, you and know. Everybody mad at him because he ain't taking. But that's just who Bron is. <laughs> right. if you, if, I mean, watching Bron grow up mm-hmm. yeah. in, this, in the state of Ohio, you know how Bron – like, Bron loves to pass the basketball. Right. So, when it comes to Fields and, and Haskins, like, Haskins is gone. Fields is following a legend. Mm-hmm. Like, what he did for Ohio State is going to be tough. So, I just want Buckeye Nation to understand that he's not Haskins. Right. What you're, at, what you're looking at is not be Haskins. Be patient. Be patient. Yeah. Let him learn. Let him learn through the mistakes. You, you're looking for somebody to be perfect. Like, we ain't go, Haskins is gone, man. Right. Ha, we got to understand that. I'm so, I'm, I'm, that. In, I'm interested to see Fields, though. Yeah. I am really am. Yeah, yeah, same with you guys. But I want to see see Fields, see how he uh, he balls. And I know it's going to be completely different from, from Dwayne Haskins. But, yeah, man. Appreciate you coming on the show, for dog. Sure. Uh, it sure. was a damn good one. Uh, yeah, that's a wrap on Benny and the Boom, the podcast. Tune in, listen. Google, Apple, Stitcher, all those. YouTube. Yeah, as we recap. We'll Give me your social media. Signing off. I don't have no social media. Oh, there it is. <laughs> there it is. No, but tune in. Listen, we, we had a great show today. For sure. For sure.